Hey guys, what's going on? You guessed it, another week of football. Thanks, XFL. We're headed down to Los Angeles to shoot the LA Wildcats, and I'm rocking a hat by the Pirate Diving Company. You can find them at piratedivecrew.com or on Instagram and Facebook, the Pirate Diving Company. We've got about an hour's drive, so I'll see you guys there. Here we are at the stadium, out on the field. The game's about to get started. Let's see what kind of shots we can get today. Hey guys, it's the next day. We're in the studio back in my office and I want to give you guys five tips on shooting a football game. I want to talk to you guys about camera settings, about peak action, about where to be on the field, filling the frame with your subject, and access. So let's start with camera settings. I'll put my screen somewhere up here for you guys to see. But I start off with a basic setting of 1 hundredth of a second at f2.8. And I set my ISO to auto and let it float between 100 and 10,000. Um, you want to have a fast shutter speed to freeze the action. And to get that, you need to have a usually a high, higher ISO, uh, depending on what time of day it is. If it's a night game, you're probably going to be pushing 6,400, 8,000, 10,000 ISO, depending on what your camera can handle. Um, you never want to drop below a thousandth of a second when you're shooting sports. Um, I usually keep it up around one sixteen hundredth, sometimes two thousandth of a second. And my f-stop is always wide open as fast as it can be. Uh, with the lenses that I use, it's usually 2.8. Um, depending on the lens you have, that might be f4, might be f5.6. Um, it would depend on the lens that you're using. Let's talk about peak action. You want to catch that key moment in the game, not right before the catch, not right after the catch. You want the catch. You don't want right before the tackle, right after the tackle. You want the tackle. You want the sack. You want the action right when it happens. Um, you know what? Let's take a look at a couple of clips and show you some examples. Let's talk about filling the frame. You want to fill the frame with your subject. You don't want to have the play and then half the football filled. You want to focus on the play. Let that fill your frame. If you have a running back trying to break through the line, you don't need to show the whole line. You just need to show where the running back's trying to break through. Let's take a look at a clip and see an example.
let's talk access. It doesn't matter if you're going to a NFL playoff game, a Rose Bowl, regular season game, a high school football game, your kid's peewee football game. It doesn't matter. You want to get the best access you can. That might mean talking to a coach. It might be calling a school and saying, hey, you know, I would love to get access. I'll trade you the photos that I get for access to the game. You never know who will say yes. All right, let's talk about field position. Where do you want to be on the field? Let's take a look at this diagram of the field and we'll talk about places to be, places to shoot from. All right, guys, here we are with our field. You can see here there is a team area in yellow on both sides from the 25 yard line to the 25 yard line. As a photographer, you cannot go into that area. And same thing with this yellow line that you see around the field. It is literally a yellow line around the field about three feet off and you cannot go past that line toward the field. You have to stay behind that line. And that area is reserved for TV crew, officials, ball boys, things like that. <clears throat> Usually where I start the game is somewhere around the 20 yard line. And that's so I can get my quarterback and player shots. I usually want to get those first. And so after the kickoff, depending on how far they get, I will say they have a touchback and they come out to the 20. I'll park around the 20 or 15 so I can get my quarterback dropping back and get my individual player shots. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side for the opposing team. You want to get, the reason I say on both sides is that you want to have the quarterback dropping back on his throwing side. You want to be on that side. So if he's right-handed, you want to be on the right side of the field. So when he drops back, he's opening up to you so you can get a nice shot. Then after I get my individual player shots and quarterback shots, then I start focusing on the game and I'll work mostly the corners of the end zone. And I'll work all four corners and work my way down the field and then work the other end, just depending on who has the ball. And then I'll probably move up and down the end zone. Big reason for this is that when you're in the end zone and the further you are in these corners, you basically have the whole field that you can shoot. When you're up here, say around the 20 yard line trying to get your player shots. If a play starts developing down the field, especially if it's on your side of the field, you're just not gonna have a shot. And a lot of that has to do with your angles. So for example, here on the 20, let's say we're butted right up on the line on the 20, and you have a play happening somewhere, it really doesn't matter, we'll say, right in here he's getting ready to throw the ball to this guy you're just not going to have a shot at it um, with these team areas in the way and tv crew and officials all down through here your field of view is just really difficult to work with so for example this angle here probably got something like that so a play anywhere in this area here just isn't going to, you're not going to see it. You're not going to get a photo of it. Where if you're down here in the corners, 
say right here, you've got an open field all the way down. and all the way across. So unless there's another photographer next to you that's inhibiting you getting one of these angles, which will be very limited, um, you've got a, a whole field that you can shoot. So, like I said, work the end zones, wait for the place to develop and get close to you so you can fill the frame. Make sure you're kneeling, getting low, shooting up, making sure that you're getting good shots of the players. It makes them look more heroic. And try to pick out clean backgrounds. So if you're shooting, let's say a high school game or a peewee game, and you're working the corners, but there's something over say back here that's a hot dog stand or some vendor or something so make sure that you're shooting wide open 2.8 f4 f5 6 you're filling the frame with your subject and that's going to help um, give you a shallow depth of field and be able to blur out hopefully some of the stuff in the background that might be problematic and for the stuff that is still problematic just change your angle and just remove it from your image completely all right guys that's it for today tune in next time where i'll go over what's in my sports photography bag leave a comment below like subscribe do all that jazz and i'll see you next time Hey guys, thanks for uh, blah -de -de blah -de -de blah. Got about an hour's drive, so we'll see you guys down there. That's probably a pretty nice car. Yes. Yes. You don't have to whisper. There's not other people. I know, but still. Hey, buddy. Can we take puppy with you. Area as a photographer. You are not allowed in that area unless the dogs decide they want to bark. All right, guys, here we are out on. Uh. All right, guys. All right, guys, we're going to show you what it means to do the wild count way. We're going to show you guys what claws up is. So, Lily, you got to show What is claws up? Claws up like this.